Welcome back. We are here live at the Capitol Theater in Arlington, Massachusetts. Tonight, we are raising money for Autism Speaks. Now, our next comedian came to us here in season three and had us laughing as hard as we could. Please welcome Steve Scarfo. How you guys doing? Yeah. We're having fun. I'm a poker player. I gamble. Every Wednesday night, I play poker. My wife knew this when we met. She knew when we got engaged. She knew we got married. I play poker on Wednesday nights. Wednesday night's poker night. What's Wednesday night? Poker. Absolutely. Last Wednesday night, I'm at a pottery class. <laughs> yeah, because here's the thing about you women. You're evil. Don't get mad at me, ladies. Not like psycho killer evil, but like evil genius evil because you know our weaknesses and you know how to exploit them. For instance, you ladies know that we can't hear you for more than 15 minutes at a time. <laughs> and it's not our fault, because from the beginning of time, ladies, men were built for one purpose. We were there to be the first responders. We were there to be the defenders of the cave. And if there's a problem, we're like, ha! <laughs> and if not, screw it, we take a nap. That's how it works. <laughs> and you ladies know this, and you don't get mad. You just wait for that 15th minute to pass, because you know at 1459, we're with you, we love you. And at 15, we go into a trance. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby, that's awesome. And it's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> And that's when you slide stuff into conversations. <laughs> and how I end up at pottery class on freaking poker night. <laughs> 16 minutes, she gets me every time. <laughs> I'm Italian. <laughs> hey, oh, we got some paisans, eh? <laughs> oh, that's right, because we're in Massachusetts. I grew up in Maine. That makes me a little disturbed. I always want to be one of the cool guys from Brooklyn with that accent going like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> nah, man, I ain't giving you no friggin' directions, okay? <laughs> Look at the size of that freaking moose. <laughs> but I grew up in Maine. What did I get? Yeah. <laughs> how you doing? No, we can't get that from here. <laughs> Pass me some of that Parmesan cheese. <laughs> it's embarrassing, ma'am. What am I gonna do for a, a mom? Am I gonna put a moose head in someone's bed? It don't work. I tried it, it's useless. <laughs> we don't have any kids, my mother's pissed at me. I don't know if I want kids, I love kids, I have nieces and nephews, they're awesome, but I don't know if I can take care of kids because there's a whole process I don't understand. You ladies know what I'm talking about, right? There's a process, right? There's nine months, there's a night of fun, nine months later, there's a process, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'd like to think I know something about the night of fun. She said no but I know nothing about the process. So I asked a friend of mine. Now, she's four days past her due date. Ladies, if you've had children, I apologize. I said women are evil, men are stupid, dumbest in the room right here. I was at her house, and she was rightfully upset this little guy had not come out. So after five or 10 minutes of her walking around going like, oh my God, Jesus, he won't, holy crap, Jesus. And I snapped like an idiot. Have you guys ever sung something and you just said it, and the minute, the minute it came out of your mouth, you're like, oh, crap, 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 and you try to get it back? And you try, but you know it's gone. And it's out there, and you're like, I'm screwed. <laughs> and I snapped. And after five, she's like, oh, my God. I'm like, freaking relax. It's only been four days. <gasps> right? I know. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. And when I got off the ground 20 minutes later, I apologized. <laughs> she kicked me in the nuts, sir. That's what happened. So I said, go to the hospital. They'll induce labor for you, won't they? But they won't. Not right away. They make you ladies wait at least a couple weeks. It's better for you and the baby if it's natural but they gave her some tricks and tips that she could try to do to induce her own labor. <laughs> try a little home remedies things. If you guys haven't heard this list, they gave her a whole list of freaky stuff to try. And I'm gonna share with you folks the top three freakiest things they told her in order of reverse freakitude. <laughs> it's a fun word, you'll use that one later. The number three thing to induce her own labor, take a ride on a bumpy road. Yeah, I see people shaking their heads, why? This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. This is the entire theory. It's like getting the ketchup out of the bottle. <laughs> right? This is what it looks like. That's just stupid. The number two thing to induce our own labor, eat spicy food. Why? Everybody's shaking their head. Why? What's it do? Burn a baby's ass and chase him out? <laughs> I don't know, people. That's what happens when I eat spicy food. What the hell? 
And the number one thing to induce your own labor is what? Yell it out, you know it. Have sex. Have sex. <laughs> I don't freaking think so. I couldn't do it. People would freak me out. Now, ladies, don't get mad. It would have nothing to do with how she looks. Because when my wife is pregnant with my child, she'll be the most beautiful woman on the planet. I'll say that right now. But with my luck, her water's going to break while we're having sex. <laughs> I think she's having the orgasm of a lifetime. <laughs> this is not a pace I can keep up. That sets a really high standard for future performance, if you know what I'm saying. And guys, have you ever done something right, but didn't know it was right to right after you finished, and you went, crap, what'd I do? That would be me next time around. I'd be like, Shh, I don't know, last time it was easy. It was once, twice, and hello. And a kid came out on a surfboard. What the hell was that? So I try to get out of the house as much as possible. I drove down here tonight, got myself a new car. Ladies, keep your seats, I know it's exciting. I got myself a 2012 Cherry Red Volkswagen Beetle. Oh yeah, it's exciting, I know. And I know you're looking at me going, stud muffin. <laughs> you are correct, I do like muffins, but I actually found out by mistake that the Beetle was actually a fun car to drive. I got it for the gas mileage, but I was driving through town the other day at rush hour and as I was driving home and driving through town, there were carloads of people going the other way, and there were people punching each other as I went by. Have you guys played the punch buggy game? Right? It's right, it's fun, right? What you guys don't know is it's so much more fun from the other side. I had all the power. I got the crap kicked out of one guy, went through the same neighborhood four times. He won't cut me off again, I'll tell you that. flying a lot too, we got to travel. And my, I'm in the airports a lot, my buddies are like, dude, don't you hate the x-ray? They can see you naked in the x-ray. That's what everybody's worried about, seeing you naked. <laughs> they want to see you naked. I'm like, dude, you don't get it. This is not a bad thing. You're thinking about this all wrong. I'm 42, I'm married. There aren't that many people who get to see me naked. <laughs> that's just a bonus. The idea that I could randomly inflict my nudity on a total stranger, that's not a problem, that's fantastic. <laughs> I was at the airport three times last week. I didn't fly anywhere, I just went through security. <laughs> By the second day, I was using body paint under my t-shirt, right, like funky monkey and stuff. Just to see if I could see what happens. What, what happens if they get mad at you? They bring in that little room, they feel you up. That's just a good Friday. <laughs> I'm just saying, hold on, this is awesome. I don't know if anyone else did this. I'm gonna take a picture of you people. You ready? You ready? ready. I don't think you're ready. ready. You guys ready? ready. All right. This is, the, this is the perspective. You guys aren't ready. Say something good. Hey, woo! They said something good. All right, that'll be on my Facebook later. And here's my problem with that. That can happen too fast. There's no filters anymore. I took a picture of you. It's going to be on Facebook before you leave your seats tonight. There's no theory. There's nothing to think about. That's, we don't have any stop gaps. You guys aren't, you're, you're looking at me like you're not understanding. Here, uh, when I was growing up, I remember actual film. You guys remember film? You had 12 chances to get a picture right. That's it. 12 pa And with your family, everybody got dressed up, right? And your family, like the number of people in your family divided by the level of stupidity equal the number of good pictures, right? For us, it was three. My brother's always pick picking his nose or something stupid. Now, with the iPhone, you can take a billion pictures. No one thinks anymore. That's why there's half-naked asses all over Facebook. They're everywhere. And you young kids over here, you know that little black thing you keep your drugs in? That used to hold film. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's a whole different theory. I have a theory, another theory about pictures too. If you're dating somebody and you're just dating for a few months and you have a family gathering, you can't let them stand in the middle of a photo. You can't, because if you break up, that's that photo, it's screwed up. You can't ever use it again. So what you do is you put them on the outside edge of the photo. If you break up, you crop them the hell up. You have to work, work, work your way to the middle. That's why in the, when you get married, it's just you too. You had to earn your way to the center. I'm just saying. And I use my iPhone all the time. I use it too much. I like, uh, like when I'm in the bathroom and I got time to kill. I can't, I, I, I'm so used to being online and doing stuff. I'm like, I'm sitting in there, I'm on Facebook, I'm playing games, I'm updating texts. That's never in the ads, is it? If you don't have the iPhone, you're bored when you poop. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's not the right place. And I love playing games and Words with Friends is my favorite game of all time. 
Yeah, we got, we got fans. Yeah, everyone plays it, but the only time I make my moves is when I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> oh my God, you can laugh now, but if the people I played ever checked the times and dates of my moves, they'd have a perfect accounting of my regularity, right? <laughs> and I know it sounds strange, but uh, I had a stomachache last week, and I went to the doctor, and the first thing he asked me, well, when's the worst time you, when's the last time you went? And I, and I couldn't remember. Then I went, oh crap, where's with friends? I pulled it out. It was last Tuesday. 3.27 p.m. The word was grunt. It was 36 points, it was a triple word score. It comes in handy. I will say this, we're talking about kids before. If I have kids, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them the right name for their private parts. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have little children, don't do what my parents did to me. The words are penis and vagina. I don't know if I can say that, but those are the biological terms. That's what we're supposed to say. Don't tell them the stupid names, because growing up, they told me mine was a ding-ding. <laughs> it's not funny, that's crap. You know what else is crap? They didn't tell me until I was 19 that it was wrong. That's not right. <laughs> Nobody talks like that. I asked a friend of mine. I had to find out where they told her hers was a hoo-hoo. Right, no, nobody, nobody talks like that, man, nobody. When she got older, her breasts became her chichis. Like we're having chips and salsa or something, I don't know. That's what they told her. No one talks like that. What if my doctor talked like that? What if I walk in the office and my doctor looks me right in my eyes and said, I'm sorry, Steve, you seem to have an infection in your ding-ding. <laughs> Apparently you've had it in too many hoo-hoos. Um, you wanna cut that out, man? Just play with the chichis a little bit? How about that, huh? Hey, unless you're batting for the other team, then you stay away from the poop poop. It's all we're asking. Hey, I've been Steve Scarfo. You guys have been a lot of fun. Thanks a lot. Woo hoo! Bring Steve back. Oh. Steve Scarfo, everybody. Now, Steve, we want to ask you if people want to find you online, buddy, where do they go? Uh, you can check me out at uh, stevescarfo.com or I'm on Facebook, Facebook slash Steve Scarfo, or liveforyourdialaughing.com. Uh, or uh, just look for my half-naked ass on Facebook, apparently. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, stay right here. This is Steve Scarfo. We'll be right back with more right after this. How about it, everybody? Yeah.